One of my favorite things about gardening is there's always room to dream of next year and the possibilities that are to come. Stay with me as I share with you the new annual introductions that I'm most excited for in 2021. friends welcome to gardening with creekside i am jenny and today we are coming to you once again from our trial gardens here at creekside nursery in dallas north carolina as you may recall we are a proven winners certified garden center and one of the fantastic things about having a great relationship with proven winners is that they send us the new introductions for next year. So we are back here at the trial gardens where we have planted all of the sun loving annuals that will be new for 2021. There have been a few that have outshone everybody else and I am super excited about them and I cannot wait to share all of the details with you. So everything that I'm going to talk about today in this video is from Proven Winners. They are annuals, meaning that they will last for one season and they will be, all of these are going to be sun loving annuals. Now, the one that we're going to start out with first is just because it is right here beside of me. This is Coffee Cups. Coffee Cups is a fantastic elephant ear that has this great clumping habit very upright and it is non-invasive so if you've ever had elephant ears in the past and they have really spread throughout your garden you don't need to worry about that with coffee cups coffee cups is really unique because it has these wonderful upturned leaves that when it rains it catches the water inside the leaf and then when it gets filled up and it's heavy enough it will tip and empty it empty the cup and then stand back upright it has a gorgeous olive green color to it on the leaves and then these nice rich chocolate mocha stems and veins in it it's absolutely gorgeous it will get to be about anywhere from three to five feet tall and wide it will make a fantastic focal point in a flower bed like we have here or even a really large container. In fact, I am cons highly considering using coffee cups in those two aqua pots that are by the pergola for next year as my main thriller for those pots. Um, it will be, we are remember in North Carolina, a zone 7B. So this can be, I know I said these are all annuals. Technically this is an annual, but if you were in zone eight, or higher, meaning like a hotter climate than us, then it actually can be a perennial for you. And if you're in a zone seven or colder, you could save these tubers. So the freeze is gonna kill all of the foliage back. If you want to keep it as a perennial, you can just mulch it well and it will overwinter well. If you are colder, you can dig them up and save them through the winter. But these are just a fantastic, low maintenance plant that is a high performer for us this year the japanese beetles did not touch this plant really really well um, it is just a gorgeous plant that i absolutely love so coffee cups elephant ear is definitely a one that will be put on my shopping list for next year the next plant that i am super excited about and it's very easy to see why is pineapple brandy coleus this plant is actually only one plant I know that it is massive and it looks huge and you're like how many plants is that jenny well it is actually only one this absolutely gorgeous coleus was bred in florida so it performs fantastic in our southern hot humid climate it absolutely thrives in our climate you can tell that it has this bright green limey chartreuse color to it and what's re really fun about it is that it has this burgundy edging on it so the stems have that great kind of that reddish color the edges do and even some of the veining does now we love this coleus not only because of its color and its vigor just absolutely a fantastic plant for both a large container and in the coleus in the coleus 
in a container and the landscape. It will do great. Um, it is more resistant to powdery mildew. So powdery mildew, you know, for us in the south is really, um, can be a problem, especially here late in the summer because of our high humidity. Pineapple brandy doesn't miss a beat. Also, it can go sun or shade. Very, very versatile. We love that about the Color Blaze series um, of Coleus because it can do sun or shade anywhere in between. Also, Pineapple Brandy is going to be a very late bloomer. Coleus, of course, is known for its foliage color and not necessarily that it has blooms. It will bloom typically, but this one is a very, very late bloomer. And of course, if you just snip it off, then it would just bush out and get even thicker. So I already have plans for pineapple brandy. I'm going to use it in mass swatches in the landscape because it just has that amazing color that just draws people's eye to itself. It is just fantastic. So make sure you add pineapple brandy to your list. The next plant on my list that I am absolutely positively in love with is the Macho Morado. This is commonly known here in the South as a Mexican Petunia. Now, if you've ever had an experience with a Mexican Petunia, you could either have a success story and you love it, or it could be a horror story. Because in the past, the typical traditional uh, Mexican Petunia can be quite um, ill-behaved, shall we say. She does, she would spread and just be kind of invasive in the garden. Well, Proven Winners has taken all of those pesky characteristics and removed them. So, this Macho Morado is very well behaved. She is more dense, a tighter habit. She will not run. She is sterile, so she stays in her, where she's supposed to, where you put her in the garden, and she has bigger blooms. Now, for us southern gardeners, this will be an absolute essential plant to add to your garden. Why? because it actually thrives in our hot, humid nights. If you're from the South, you know, especially this time of year, end of August, end of September, our nights do not get cool. It was just the other night, it was 11 o'clock and we were watching the news, it was still 80 degrees and like 96% humidity. And it stays that way basically all through the night. This is the type of weather that this um, Mexican petunia absolutely thrives in. Now, can northern, northern gardeners grow it? Absolutely, it will do fantastic. But you may notice that you're gonna have fewer blooms on it than us southern gardeners because this is one of those few plants in the world that actually loves hot, humid nights. So it is absolutely fantastic. These blooms are an absolutely gorgeous, um, kind of a deep lavender color, nice and big pollinators love it and are very attracted to it. Again, it will bring some height to your garden um, and bring an interest, a nice focal point to your space. So make sure you add this fantastic Mexican petunia to your garden next year. I know that I'm going to use her in lots of various spaces. The next plant that we're going to talk about has been an absolute showstopper here at the nursery. People from yards away have asked, what is that gorgeous plant? Well, that is Medusa, a fantastic new sweet potato vine that has this absolutely gorgeous lime green chartreuse color, very vibrant. It is quite the spreader. It has great habit to it. It's nice and low and grows wide. This would be a fantastic plant to put in a hanging basket. It can do part sun to sun. It would bring you great foliage, color, brightness to if you have a hanging spot on your porch. I know here in the South, a lot of people like to use like Boston ferns on their front porches, but a lot of times by the end of the summer, it's just too hard to keep them well watered and keeping them lush. Well, Medusa would be a fantastic replacement for those hanging ferns and gives you that great color, that great hanging, draping, trailing effect in a hanging basket. It clearly does really well in the landscape. So if you're going to put it in the landscape, I would suggest putting it in the front of your bed because it does have a nice low and wide habit. It will bring a lot of 
pop and color to an area. Um, so you could put just a thousand things behind it to, to come off of it. But just that Medusa is a fantastic, really unique sweet potato vine because it is really has deep serrated leaves on it, lobes on it, and just would make a fantastic addition to your part sun to sun garden. One of the plants that I'm gonna add to my pollinator next year for absolutely sure is the new lantana. This is the new luscious royale red zone. If you are looking to attract butterflies, pollinators to your garden, then you have got to add this lantana. It is really, really unique because the new blooms will come out red and orange and as they mature, they will turn a solid red. I am talking vibrant, fire truck, fire engine, red. Really neat color on it. Like I said, the pollinators, the butterflies, absolutely go nuts over this. Of course, Lantana loves the hot, hot weather. It is absolutely thriving in our heat and humidity here in the late summertime. It has a really nice mounded, tight habit to it. It's not very leggy at all. It's nice and tight. Of course, that gorgeous green foliage on it against those red and orange blooms absolutely make it a showstopper. So if you're looking for a new Lantana, make sure you add red zone to your list because I know I'm always looking for like a true red to add to my garden spaces. Well, this is it. It is absolutely fantastic. Last but not least is perhaps it's really maybe my favorite. You know, it's hard to choose. It's like saying who's your favorite child. You really can't say. But this is one of my favorite new introduction plants this year. And it's not just one plant. It's actually three plants because it's all in the same series. It is the double up begonia. And if you're like Jenny, you know, it's a begonia. How fantastic can a begonia be? Well, let me just tell you how fantastic these can be. There are three colors in this Double Up series. There is a pink, there is red, and there is white. These are perhaps some of the most fantastic plants because they are completely maintenance free. They are self-cleaning. You do not have to deadhead them and they are absolutely gorgeous. They are really have a natural, tight habit on it. All of these plants that you see, I have not pinched them once. They have naturally grown this way in that nice rounded, mounded habit, and they are covered in blooms. And they have been since we got them as little four inch containers. These plants are just wonderful. The pink is just a true soft baby doll pink on that great green foliage. Just an absolutely lovely plant. Next is the red. Again, another lovely true red on a darker foliage, so it really does stand out. And finally, there is white, a pure white bloom, again, on a bit of a darker foliage, so it really pops against the plant. Another thing, another reason to love these plants is that they can do sun or shade. As a little test, I grew the pink and the red in the absolute full sun. Clearly, they have done amazingly well. The white has been in full shade. Again, it has done amazingly well. It stayed in the shade all day long. It does get maybe a couple of hours, maybe two hours of sun at the very end of the day. But remember, a shade plant gets four hours of lesser sun. So these begonias, if you have that trouble spot and you just can't quite figure out what plant to put in there, but you want flowers and you want color, I would highly suggest that you use this double up begonia. Again, whether you want white, red, or pink, extremely versatile. They will do great in containers, great in landscapes, just extremely versatile, high performing, low maintenance plants. You cannot go wrong with these three colors. I hope that you have been excited and just are already looking forward to the next 2021 growing season like I am. I know sometimes when I'm in a growing season and I'm already dreaming about the next one, I feel like I'm kind of cheating on this year's garden, but you know, I think the plants can handle it. Hopefully you have found plants that you are excited about, inspired about, already dreaming about putting in your garden. Make sure that you add these plants to your garden journal. If you're already thinking about that you really love one of these plants, Go ahead, jot it down in your gardening journal, which one you like, and think about where you want to put it. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.